Last year, Ford gave us the Mark II Focus RS and showed us that you could just about put 300 brake horsepower through the front wheels. Well, now they're back again with this, the limited edition RS500, that ups the game to 345 brake horsepower. For me, though, it's not the Ford's power that's the most interesting fact about the car, it's its price. Because Ford wants £35,000 for this car, and for that, you could have not one, but two Clio Cups. Now, I'm not suggesting this Focus RS500 needs to be twice as good as the Clio Cup, because that is a pretty tall order, but by driving it on the road and then later back at the track, I'm trying to find out just where it can justify its price premium. Or for that matter, the premium over the regular Focus RS, because the 500 is about seven grand more expensive. And that buys you, principally, that extra 45 brake horsepower and a bit more torque, which comes from changes to the fuel delivery system and the exhaust. The actual turbocharger, that remains unchanged. On the outside, you've got that mandatory matte paint finish, and on the inside here, just a few cosmetic changes. Now, an interesting point here, because if you get in this 500 and gun it for the first two gears, you're not actually going to feel any benefit over the regular RS because it is torque limited. It's not until you get into third gear that you can feel the benefit of all the extra power and torque. And this is where the poor old Clio can't hope to keep up with a 500 in a straight line. And the Ford also sounds better than the Clio. We've got loads of pops and bangs on the overrun and induction whooshes. And because the suspension on the 500 isn't any different from the regular car, the ride's pretty good. And it's just such a fun car to drive on the road. You've got a great turn in, adjustable chassis, and now with the extra pace you've got in third and fourth gear, it's such a weapon. And now we're in the Clio, the whole car feels more alive and energetic. In the Focus, there's no lack of agility, but it does feel like you're wielding the heavy artillery, you're slotting third gear, you're unleashing all that power and torque, you're somewhat bludgeoning the road. In the Clio, though, you've really got to keep the engine in the boiler and you've got to keep the momentum up through the corners. And that makes for a different type of enjoyment than you get in the Ford. Now, which is better? Well, that's debatable, but I reckon there's more opportunity to enjoy the Clio on the road than there is the Ford. That's on the road, at least. Now, let's see how they compare on the track. All right, it's not scientific, but I'm going to use the old stopwatch for a lap time. Yeah. I'm just going to be patient out of the slow corners. It's like a juggernaut down the straights, though. There's so much torque. Problem with this. It's just that little bit too much rear axle movement. Very amusing on the road. It's been a fast circuit. Just catch you out a little bit. What's that then? Two minutes twelve. I mean, there's no denying this is a really entertaining track car, but you just get the sense you're going to be paying the price in terms of tyres and brake wear. And I just expect the Clio to just feel a little bit more at home. Not faster, just like it's built for this. Right over the line, let's go for a time in the Clio. It just feels a lot more stable, a lot firmer, a lot more stability at the rear. Oh, this is where the Clio feels just so underpowered. It's where all that torque deficit shows. No different in this car, so if you get on the power too early, you're just going to waste time and power. It's just so confidence inspiring through the fast stuff. Over the line, 2.15 and a half. Which, it's got to be said, is a pretty respectable time. That's what, three, three and a half seconds off the focuser's pace and down 150 horsepower. Now, to an extent, the little debate we're having today is redundant because Ford has already sold each and every one of the RS500 it plans to make. And each one of those owners will have a very exciting, striking looking car. Now, do I think it's worth the extra over the regular RS? Well, I've got to say, I don't think it is. Now, second question, do we think the RS500 teaches the Clio Cup anything? Well, I reckon you certainly cover ground quicker in the Ford and it is a more refined package. But I think it's the Renault that better defines the essence of what a hot hat should be. And given that you can buy that car for less than £17,000, makes it a bit of a steal. In fact, I reckon pound for pound, there's no better hot hatch in the market. 